Thanks for tuning in. This is Optibotomous coming with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 266 of the Battle of the Battle Damage version of RoboCop with Alex Murphy. As you can see for the package, you got the nice RoboCop logo going right through. And then you have both an image of the Alex Murphy sculpt as well as the new RoboCop head featuring Robo without his helmet but still in the actual RoboCop look. Really very cool, and I love how the actual art kind of depicts both of the heads kind of fading into each other. I mean, it's really cool how they did that. Got a really nice texture on here that does show uh, some scratches and things of that nature. Come around here to the back, you can see that it's actually a fairly thin box. And then you come around all the way to the back, and you have the uh, various contact information and some more warnings and things of that nature for RoboCop. Uh, it is a little bit of the uh, shoebox kind of package. You just slide this up, and then you have a... Uh, 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 more information here specifically showing the cast and crew responsible for making this figure as well as the the OCP logo right there this section just slides right out and then you're left with the clamshell which houses the figures and the accessories within so you have Robocop on this side you got Alex Murphy on that side you got all of Alex's uh, extra hands and all of his accessories and then you have Robocop's uh, accessories here on this side now if you remember the original version that came with or that came out some time ago it featured the you know just robocop figure or you could get a set that also included uh, his control chair i guess and if you have that figure this set here really does nicely complement it as some of the parts are kind of interchangeable and the instructions touch on that and i'll i'll mention that here when we get to it but uh, for the package that's about it for it so without further ado let's get these guys out here and see how cool they actually are all right guys so starting off with alex murphy first because he's basically the brand new figure in this set as you would expect with Hot Toys, you get a lot of different, very highly detailed uh, accessories that are very specific to when Murphy looked like this. And obviously before he was changed to RoboCop. First up, we have a, a bunch of little smaller accessories here just uh, in this clamshell. I'm going to open that up so you can see it a little bit better. He comes with a flashlight, a pair of handcuffs, a wristwatch, and then these two little pieces right here add on uh, to other accessories, basically. This little section here is like the uh, microphone piece that will go on his helmet and then this section here is the back of his head uh, specifically the hair uh, they don't include any like gruesome parts or anything like that but this is designed to kind of fill in how he uh, would wear his helmet it comes around here and it sits around here on the back just like so the helmet if you remember uh, with the Avengers Loki this actually separates very similarly and then it forms around his uh, actual head and I'll show that off here in a little bit but you do got some nice smaller accessories like I said, you got the little flashlight right here with a really nice little lens kind of thing on there. I mean, that's tiny. And if it focuses pretty good, uh, you can see some good detail on there. Uh, it, it is just, like I said, a flashlight. Uh, he does come and get these out here. He comes with a, a pair of handcuffs. Again, if my camera will focus on there, it's a little bit better, I guess. But the handcuffs are unfortunately just made out of plastic. I do wish that they were uh, metal. Uh, you can see they can open both sides. You can just slide that back in. Both slides do have that ability to open. It does have a metal chain in the middle, but I probably would have liked this uh, to be actually die cast. I don't think that would be asking too much, I don't think, but it's still a nice piece. Uh, obviously, he does have his little wristwatch, which is very accurate to how it looked in the, the film itself. It's always very nice when they include small little touches like this that really just help to bring uh, the rest of the details out. And then, like I said, you got the little hair piece, which that, that's nothing super special. And then for the helmet, you got this little the microphone piece right here. You got a little notch right there. You just put that in. There you go. Make sure that you give that a nice little push in there. Uh, it's not articulated or anything like that, so you do want to be careful with it. It is a very small piece that could be damaged if you fiddle with it so much, but it's pretty nice, and it just kind of hangs out there. Again, as to the uh, realism and authentic nature of the actual helmet, uh, staying here on the helmet, you can see you got the funky little strap right down here that goes around his chin. I always thought that that was weird looking. Uh, the visor does come down, and it uh, protects his eyes. As I said, it comes in uh, three separate parts so you kind of push this in just like that you want to be careful when you're doing it so kind of there we go separate that kind of push that in to separate that from the rest and then this section right here will detach 
And then you put this around his head. There is a little foam on the inside, which is really very nice. It protects the ears and the uh, just paint job in general. So we'll take a look at this. I'll leave this in the sections right there. And we'll take a look at that here in a little bit in addition to how the actual hair goes on and how you put that helmet on them properly. You do want to be careful when you're putting all this on. Uh, you do get the instruction manual and like with all Hot Toy figures, I do recommend reading this setting all these little smaller pieces you do get several different hands you get two relaxed hands that are currently on them uh, you get a a right hand that is kind of like you know like maybe have him holding a, a flashlight you know something like that so it's got a little bit of an open palm that you can hold not really hold the actual guns but something like the flashlight it works perfectly for um you do get a, a right hand that has his finger out so that you can twirl his gun now you can't actually twirl the gun but you can take something like this put it in there and have that kind of display or something like that i mean it's kind of cool that they included it it was something that was very notable on or in the actual film his twirling of the gun was something that he talked to lewis about and that's what eventually uh, allowed lewis to recognize that robocop was in fact Al alex murphy uh, you do get two close fists and then you get a both right and left hand that are opened up to uh, hold his gun. You can see that the trigger hands are out there. Uh, he does also come with two guns. The first one being the one that he actually uses in the movie. Uh, well, well, he uses both of them, but this is his actual piece. And again, getting this to focus on it, uh, you can see that real nice detail. You got a very nice wash on there. The uh, top section here is spring loaded so that you can uh, cock the weapon. You can come around here, use a fingernail and you can pull out the little clip and that has a nice little paint detail on there showing that there's bullets put that right back in there like i said this is the gun that he actually had when he was chasing the bad guys right before he was killed he asked for lewis's uh, gun so you also do get lewis's gun and as they're driving and shooting that van that they just robbed the bank with he does have both of these guns in his possession and you can see real nice detail all the way throughout both of these pieces. Uh, now, in addition to that, as always, you do get extra wrist pegs. That's probably never going to stop happening. So I got like a bazillion of these things. And then, I mean, this really isn't a, an extra accessory, but it does remove, this is his vest, uh, bulletproof, I guess. It doesn't really work too well for him, <laughs> especially if you've seen the movie. Uh, it just Velcros on here, and I'll show how to put that on. But coming to the figure himself, I guess I should also mention that he does come with uh, the adjustable cradle stand, uh, getting him to stand right here without it. Uh, it does just have the RoboCop logo with Alex Murphy, and then you've got the adjustable uh, crotch-grabbing cradle right there. So that's an extra piece as well. Uh, but great-looking figure. The sculpt on him and the portrait is really outstanding. Coming in to take a look at that, I mean, that absolutely is Peter Weller, which is phenomenal. That's such a really great recreation. And then the rest of the outfit is really well done. Now, he did not always wear his vest when he first was assigned to uh, the particular police department i forgot the name of it but the one in which he eventually gets killed as he's walking throughout the the police station this was what he was wearing now then he did throw his vest on when he went out in the field but i love how it's got murphy right there you can see ocp detroit police department you can zip this down and reveal his kind of gray shirt but i think it was in the film it was a little bit more bluish gray so the color on this might not be entirely accurate but Great detail on the rest of the jumpsuit as well. You come down here, you got a little pouch right there that can Velcro open, and that's used to uh, hold his handcuffs. You can just Velcro that back down. You got a section right here for his flashlight, and then all the way down here, another Velcro part that you can take his gun, bringing out the right one, and that just holsters right in there, just like so. Kind of push that real far down there. And then, like I said, Velcro's back down very nicely. Uh, you do have that uh, nylon belt. Uh, it does have clips. I'm not going to take it off or anything like that, but it does look like it can remove. He's got all these extra pouches here on the side. There are just little foam pieces in there just to kind of uh, keep the shape out. But then you got all these pockets on the rest of his pants. You got some padding right here on the front of his thighs. Uh, one thing that I do not like uh, uh, is the way that his boots are. You can see that the toes go up, so it kind of makes them want to rock a little bit uh, very accurate looking boots i love them very uh, militaristic looking but I, 
I just really don't like that rocker kind of look. That's very unfortunate. Uh, I mean, you can kind of see that it does pose a potential problem for any kind of balancing that you want to do, just getting them standing up there. But really great looking uh, figure. Now, taking the, the jacket here, you can see that zips up just like so. You got all these little Velcro pouches, so this is something that you can uh, adjust a little bit. And then you take this, we'll just put this over his head, just like so. Kind of lift his arms up some, bring that down, bring that together, right like so. Do that on this side as well, just like so. Kind of keep that down. This section here, you can adjust this and bring that a little bit better into position, just like so. Brings it down a little bit more, kind of futz with it a little bit, get the collar popped some. But there you have it. And really, like I said, a great looking piece that really does, in my opinion, nail the sculpt on him. I mean, specifically, I should say his actual portrait. I mean, that just looks absolutely spot on. And then if you want to put his helmet on, you come right to the back, this whole section here, this lifts up and it kind of gives a, a weird look and honestly makes it seem like, like Robocop, <laughs> I guess. So then we're gonna take this, you're gonna bring this down, bring this, you gotta get this over his chin, just like so, come on, there you go. Just like that, kind of position that where that's gonna be on his chin, just like so. Come around here, then you're going to take that extra hair piece, you're going to put that right there, just like so. Take this section here, this clips back on. It's a little bit uh, fiddly to do, so just be patient with it, go fairly slow, get everything lined up. There we go, get that on there nice and secure. Then you bring this, again, helps to kind of squeeze this in a little bit. Bring that over, lock that down, make sure that's all the way there. And there you have uh, his more tactical look. And again, you can bring that down if you want to. But I think that's a really cool way of doing it. I, I really appreciate how they uh, incorporated that. I probably would have preferred it a little bit more if they gave us a second head so that you just pop this one off and then put the new one on. But, but all in all, I still think that this works very nicely. And again, really does nicely capture that the look that Murphy had specifically towards, well, his end, I guess. And now taking a look at the Battle Damage Robocop. In terms of his accessories, he really doesn't come with a heck of a lot, to be totally honest. I mean, even the Alex Murphy figure didn't really come with a lot. But what you do get really is kind of all you need to really display him in a very cool look. Now, up first, in addition to the two uh, fisted hands that you have, you do get also a both right and left hand that are articulated, which are really very well done, and nicely can be posed to even hold his weapons, which you do need to do because he doesn't come with a hand that's in a gun holding pose. And then he does come with a, a little bit modified version of his data spike. Now, as you can see, coming in to take a look at this, uh, basically what you have is his bloodied up version of uh, his uh, data spike. And it's really very cool. You can see the blood detail all the way down onto the actual knuckle section and coming up on the actual spike itself. Really very neat. The other thing that I want to talk about, uh, and this is true on all the pieces on him that has this kind of black look. Uh, if you remember in the original one, this is the clean original one that came with uh, the first Robocop. You can see that he's got a very glossy look on his palm. And that's true, like I said, of every part on him that has the, uh, the black part. Uh, whereas the new section is more muted. You can see that it's kind of dull. And I, I actually like that because it really shows him dirty and worn out, almost like he's got like dust or something on him from being shot at. I, I don't know, but I really like that. I think that's a really cool touch that they included it. I think that was really a very nice touch just to give him that little bit more wear of a look. And like I said, you can really see that here on the actual torso itself. But we'll cover that here just a little bit. Uh, he also does come with two guns much like the original set did uh, basically identical uh, except you can see that the the handle with this one here is a little bit more stubby compared to this one uh, this one is the die cast one and this is just a plastic one the die cast one does have uh, this section 
uh, where's it at one of the one of the there we go this section does flex back uh, it's just part of the recoil action I think on the gun this section doesn't have it this is all just one molded piece they specifically tell you that you're not supposed to use the uh, die cast one to holster but it fits just the same so I don't really see much of a difference honestly or why you have to use the die cast one I, I think that the plastic one is a little bit better in terms of the detail you can see some nice silver paint on the actual handle whereas this one just has this black section so you do get a few more paint applications on the plastic and honestly this is the piece that I choose to display with my Robocop the die cast one is nice uh, you got some heavy weight to it but it just really doesn't fit all that well and like I said you have to use his uh, well, let's use this one. Uh, you have to use his articulated hand to bring things around and get him to hold his gun. That's something that I, I really do wish, and because it, it's it, it's not easy to. I, I've never held a gun, honestly. Uh, so getting uh, it to look natural is, is is tricky for me. So you gotta be very. Uh, creative with the the holding of the gun and uh, honestly like I said I mean I'm not good at doing it so this is what you're left with I do wish that it included a hand that was specifically sculpted in a way that allowed him to hold the gun I, I think that these are great pieces to have I've loved these ever since they were introduced with uh, the Iron Man figures I just think that all gun hands should be included when there's a gun. So uh, you do have that. The other kind of cool thing is that you do get three little bottles of baby food. Um, yeah, little bottles of baby food. And the camera wants to focus on Robocop in the back. But you do get these. Now, it does come with stickers that you can put on there. I'm not going to do it. Honestly, I'm not even going to display these with, with Robo. But I do like that they actually included that. You can set that up and put it like that and have him target practice that. So that's really very 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 neat that they actually included that it was a scene in the film that was kind of funny and i like that they included it uh the other piece that he comes with here is the cobra assault cannon now this thing is really ridiculously cool it was massive and powerful in the movie itself the problem that you have is that the way that the articulation is you can't really rotate him at well at, at all in the arms uh, this section here does rotate you can rotate the hands but you can't get it in a position that you know has him holding it it's not very natural looking so you you want to set him up holding the gun you know like something like that or something and then bring this arm in and you can't do it uh, now when he did use this gun it was towards the end of the film and he actually used this to destroy the ed 209 he got out of the police car used this uh, stand section here put that on the car and that's what he used to kind of prop it up and uh, shoot the Ed 209. So, I, I mean, I guess it works. I, I do like that they included this. It's a really cool gun. You can see that you got some nice painted detail on the, well, you got a little red and yellow section right there. You got this section right here that is spring loaded, goes back and forth. So I do like the fact that they included the Cobra Cannon. Uh, it's a great piece, it's a great touch. He just can't hold it or anything. And honestly, that's, that's a little bit disappointing, but I, I do get it. It's it's you know a very iconic that piece from the film itself, and realistically, he didn't hold it in his hand. So I guess you could say that it is accurate to just have it like that. But we don't have a car for him to prop it on. Now coming to Robo himself again, like I said, you can see obvious differences here. The first one being that we actually have an unhelmeted head version of Alex Murphy, and the detail here is spectacular. Again, coming in here so that you can see this, you can actually see that he's got his bullet wound right there i love the fact when you come along here the side you can see that basically it is just alex murphy's face peeled off and put on this metal section that was actually confirmed to be true i believe it was in the 20th anniversary uh, dvd commentary they said that they wanted it to look like his face was just taken off and overlaid on the the robotic body but you look at all that detail on there i mean absolutely I, i'm trying to get in closer here i mean look at that detail simply 
stunning on there. You can really see that it is just skin on top of it. I mean, it's really super, super impressive. Uh, you come around here to the back, you can see some great detail in terms of the paint and what looks like blood coming out of it. It could be hydraulic fluid or something, who knows. Great detail in the burn and scorch marks here on the whole arm. I mean, everywhere on here has all these scratches and scorch marks. I mean, you can even see some more, uh, I'm just going to call it blood splatter. You come around here to this section. Now, this chest piece is very similar uh, to the battle damage chest piece that we got in the first release. Uh, you can see in terms of the scars and the bullet holes, very similar. They are pretty much identical. You do have some scorch marks on the original piece, but this one just has a lot more dirty, bloody kind of looks on there. I mean, absolutely spectacular looking. I love how even this shoulder piece here is all distorted and bent, really showing just how damaged he is. Now, again, coming down here, you can see what I was talking about before with the very muted color tone and bringing in the original Robocop, you can see very uh, pretty glossy, very clean and new looking. This has a much more damaged kind of look to it and his little hand is coming out here, so get that back in there. But you can see just what I was talking about in terms of how it just looks as if there's a powder on there, like when he was being shot at and there was all that smoke, it just looked like, or it looks like the smoke just stayed on the body. I mean, really impressive. Come down here to the actual leg. Again, wonderful detail on here with the scorching, the bullet holes, uh, some cool paint detail showing like a leaking fluid and everything. Very, very spectacular. Now, as I talked about, if you do have the original one, they do talk about how you can interchange some pieces. So if you wanted to take this piece off, this comes off. Now you can see that it still has the body that the original one had in terms of the speaker right there. Unfortunately though, this does not have any of the sound bits that the original one did. So that's a little bit disappointing, but I honestly didn't expect it all that much and it doesn't bug me, but you can see, like I said, very uh, subtle in terms of the differences. This is just a lot more battle damaged, but you can take this, you can put this on there, clip that on. You can put that if you wanted to have a little less of a battle damage look. The other thing that you can do, and they don't, uh, in the instructions, they really don't show you what you can actually do, but you can swap the heads. Now, the problem that I have, uh, this piece right here comes off, and you can see these little rubber pieces right here. Uh, unfortunately, these little rubber pieces are supposed to be attached, and this is not easy to get out. They're supposed to be attached to this right there. Um, when I tried taking it off, it actually just basically pulled away. So it's like they weren't glued down very good. Um, but it is a little bit difficult to get him to kind of articulate. And honestly, if you're going to be rotating this around, this section here is going to detach just anyhow. But at least it stays uh, flush down there pretty well. Again, though, you will have to be careful when you're doing it. But you can take this off, this whole section right here. Also, you're gonna wanna take off. And then obviously we got this guy's head, just pull this off, just like so, although you don't wanna take that whole section off. So we're gonna leave that back in there. Get that like that. And then this whole section, this we're going to take off. You can take the battle damage section from the first one where he's got this battle damaged helmet piece. And then honestly, you know, let's see, get this. This is there, you have to fiddle with all this, but you can get it to look really cool. So take that off, take, taking that out just like that. And then you take this, we're going to put this back up there, get this positioned properly. Well, let's see which way should it go. I guess it doesn't really matter which way it goes, but put that there. And it can take this section and then you'll use this to cover down here. So that slides down there and then you can put this right on there, put the battle damage section on him, clip that on. And now you have a more battle damage look, which I think really is cool looking. That fits so much nicer. And then with this piece, obviously we're going to uh, take this section, put that in there like so. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's the other way. Or maybe they're not even, no, no, they look like they're the same size. So you put that there. You can take this section, bring this down. Well, actually we're going to, I'm gonna move him to the back, come around here, line this up, put that right there. Take this, collapse that down just like so. 
and now you have him with his helmet off, which for me, I, I really do like this. I think that this is a much cooler display option, especially if you do have that uh, particular set with his uh, command chair and you got the helmet. I mean, you can't really put that on or anything, but this is gonna look so much cooler having him without his helmet sitting on his chair. Whereas this is just gonna look much cooler fighting alongside the Ed 209 like I have set up in my display. So the display options are really very cool. And I love the fact that they made it so that the figures that you had previously, such as the die cast one, can be even further enhanced by using parts from the new uh, battle damaged one and vice versa. Now, as I mentioned, this is the die cast version. This one does not have any die cast in it whatsoever. It's a little unfortunate, but again, I don't mind because we are getting that extra figure. Now, uh, he does have the same leg gimmick. You come down here, you wanna pop this out. All the articulation is the exact same on these. These slide out, allows for a little bit more of a range of motion. The waist can lift so you can get some flex right there. I collapse that back now. Well, I'll just leave that. The hips can pop out so that you can spread things and get a much a wider stance. This section here flexes back. That flexes or slides forward. Put this again. You want to make sure that you move the actual lower part of the leg before you pull this section out because it is uh, this section right here does get in the way and then you have that and again you can put the regular gun in there it fits perfectly fine or if you really wanted to you could put the die cast one both of them fit in there both close perfect uh, I don't know why they tell you not to use the die cast one but it, it, it works the same so um, I, I don't quite get it but there we have Robocop, and again, like I said, I don't get that position properly. Like I said, just having both of them, it really does enhance the overall display option for uh, this character by himself. Now, as I said in my review of the original figure, Robocop is a franchise that I've absolutely loved since I was a kid. It's really become a kind of a cult classic sort of film. And in terms of entertainment value, I really feel even holds up by today's standards. When the original Robocop figure came out from Hot Toys, I was really kind of disappointed that they didn't give us that head sculpt, kind of as an extra accessory. But coupling a severely battle, battle damaged version of him with that head sculpt and including a full on just Alex Murphy figure really kind of made this set well worth picking up again. As I said, with the different options that you can use in terms of the mix and matching of parts, you can really create two very kind of iconic looks. And for me, this head just works so much better with that clean body to actually sit on his command chair. A piece that honestly went into storage after I got it, now it's back and it will be utilized in my display. So to me, that is just kind of a feather in the cap sort of thing. I really do have to give Hot Toys credit for releasing a set that makes me honestly want to use something that was previously released. For Alex Murphy, he's probably the weakest of this entire set, but still looks great. I can understand why uh, they put him as an extra piece in the RoboCop uh, sort of set instead of setting him aside and selling him separately. Now, if you do want the RoboCop separately, it is available. You can buy just this figure. But like I said, I think pairing these together in a whole different set really did help to get people to actually care about the Alex figure. I don't think just by itself, it would sell well. And when you break down the price, both of these figures work out to be a little over $200 a piece. The whole set is a little over 400, but average wise, I think it's pretty good. You aren't getting a ton of accessories, but what you are getting work perfectly. And like I said, if you do have that other Robocop figure, you have a lot of other accessories that you could throw on this guy. Everything on them, the quality, the craftsmanship, be it the paint detail or the, the working for the fabrics or even the sculpting of the portrait on both of these figures is absolutely stunning. Easily one of Hot Toys best sculpts to date. So all that being said, if this is a set that you'd like to pick up, or as I mentioned, you can't get RoboCop just by himself, if any of this is something that you'd be interested in, it is available on Sideshow Collectibles. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow where you can pick this up and add them to your collection. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my Facebook page at facebook.com slash teambotomous and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optibotomous. 
Also, I'd encourage you to check out my website at optobotomistreviews.com, where you can see all my videos from the previous week, see what I have coming up for future release, and also get your very own Optobotomist t-shirt. And finally, I'd also really appreciate it, guys, that if you like this review, don't forget to please like and comment, and be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a future review. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.